Jesus bless this message in Jesus name I pray. Amen. Hey guys, um, I put yesterday, I'm still at a hotel because we're out of town. My husband's getting ready to come out the shower. So here goes how we're going to do our video. But listen very carefully. Holy Spirit's all over this, y'all. All over this, putting these messages out for you as, as much as I can. And yesterday, I put out the parables. That's homework for you to do all throughout the week. Okay, I gave you a few parables. And I did the first one for you. The new wine and old bottles, I did that for you. I want you to dissect those and bring them to the barn Friday night. We're going to dissect them live. Today, I'm going to talk about living where I live. Uh, where I live, it's, it's really country. But to get to anything, there's, you got to go across this bridge to get in and out of there. You got to cross this bridge, you know, to get to the other side. And when you come to that bridge, there's a big bridge, it's just water and concrete. Well, you know, I don't like to cross in bridges, but you know there's something on the other side, right? You just can't see it. Lots of things have to happen to make it across successfully, right? Bridge holds up, car makes it, other drivers on that bridge, no boat can ram the bridge and all that bunch of stuff, right? But can you start thinking about all the possible bad scenarios? And you can talk yourself out of crossing that bridge, man, when you start thinking about the bad stuff, right? Just turn around and stay right where you're at. Forget about it. I'm not going to cross that bridge. But to get to the other side, you got to take two very important steps. Number one, you got to trust the bridge. Amen. And number two, you got to go. You got to go. You understand me? You with me? Now, there's a story in the Bible, y'all, that demonstrates this need for faith and for action. Okay. So what we're going to do, uh, it's, it's a very familiar story to everybody listening to me right now. It's probably one of the most well-known stories in the whole Bible, actually. It's the story of the Hebrews crossing the Red Sea, which we just celebrated, right? With these uh, trumpets and tabernacles and all that. But it's the story that's in Exodus chapter 14, okay? To get the full gist of the story, we're going to read the entire chapter. So what I want you to do right now, all 31 verses, I want you to pause the video right now. And you need to do it or else you may as well just forget it. Because you won't know what the heck's going on. You really want to know what's going on. Pause and read Exodus 14, 1 through 31. Go ahead and pause. Praise God, you should have read Exodus 14, 1 through 31. Okay? So this is a very familiar story. All right? The Israelites have their back against the wall, right? They've left Egypt. The Egyptians decide that they don't want to let them go. So they chase them. The Israelites got nowhere to escape. The Egyptians are coming from the front. And the Red Sea is at their back. Amen. So they followed the Lord out of Egypt. And that's where that gets them. Trapped. Amen? Are they trapped? They're like, what? With no possible way to escape? We followed the Lord, and this is where we are? We're trapped? Right? Then the Red Sea parts. Amen? Just dries up. <laughs> Praise God. The Israelites learned some very valuable lessons that day. The story's got some very valuable lessons for us, too. Okay? Okay? The Israelites found themselves in a position that every single Christian at some point finds ourselves in. Let me get an amen on that. We try to follow the Lord, right? And sometimes, even when we do that, trouble comes. We can't see how we can escape where we're at, how we're going to get out of this one, right? We're in a position where there don't seem to be any hope whatsoever. And sometimes we do it to ourselves. You might be there right now. Maybe you're listening to me. Maybe you're there right now. Maybe you know somebody who's there right now. Amen? You or them. 
whoever can't see how in the world you're going to get to the other side of the mess that you got yourself into. There's lessons here, y'all, for you and for me. Let's learn the lesson of going to the other side of that bridge. Okay, so following the Lord ain't easy. It's not easy. It's certainly nobody ever said it was. Okay, following the Lord can put you in some very impossible positions. Okay, understand that. We see the Israelites, you know, they're, 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 in, a, they're in a pretty funny position here. In verses 1 and verse 2. Go ahead and read verses 1 and verse 2 again of chapter 14. Pause your video. Okay. The Israelites, they were following the directions of the Lord. Amen. The Lord's telling them where to camp. Okay. There's this place on the side of the Red Sea. There's nothing to protect you from, from, from the front. Right? And there's nowhere for you to run behind you. Yep, that's where I want you to camp, right there, <laughs> right there, man. The Lord's directions put their backs up against the wall. <laughs> so we, me and you, we're called to follow the directions of the Lord. That's what we're called to do. As Christians, we believe God's way is the only way, correct? Can I get an amen on that? And some, probably most, of God's ways they run counter to the ways most of the world follows. Amen to that. Yes. But that that that's the deal, y'all. That's what that's the deal with being a Christian. We can choose to follow God through Jesus. Because he sacrificed everything for us. And we love him for that. Amen. And we choose to follow his ways, not ours, and his directions, not ours. Ours gets us in trouble every time. Our way is the wrong way, every time. And that might put some of you in some uncomfortable positions. Amen? To follow the Lord, not yourself. You might have to stand up against wrong things. You might have to sacrifice uh, pride for doing what's right. Amen? People might not like you much anymore. Amen? <laughs> People might even want to hurt you because you stand up for Jesus Christ and his ways and what he says is right. Well, I wish I could give you a smooth way out, but sometimes there's just not one. Okay? Sometimes there's no out. There's no compromise, okay? And it might make us very uncomfortable. That's a fact. There's no promise, y'all, of being comfortable in a relationship with Jesus Christ when the world is constantly out to kill him. Sometimes you got to go against the grain. Let's put it that way. Even when it hurts. And all we have, y'all, is our faith. Understand this. So following the Lord, it could be very frightening. It could be uncertain. That's right. I'm telling you like it is. We get a pretty good picture of all that in Exodus and, and, and the following books after Exodus. In this situation, we see it clearly in verses 11 and 12. Please pause and read Exodus 14, 11 through 12. Okay, you should have paused. All right, the Egyptians show up on the horizon now. Dust. They're flying up everywhere. Hundreds of chariots with horses snorting, man. A very frightening scene. You can hear the gallop, ka -clank, ka -clank, ka -clank, you know what I mean? And the Israelites are freaking out, literally. They're freaking out. They are completely scared to death. They're ready to surrender, man. That's what they're ready. They're ready to turn around and go back to where they came from. Right back to all that hell that they came out of. They were ready to go back where they came from and give up. They had rather return to their old way of life than to face the future of freedom. Yeah. So at least they knew, you know, what they was, you know, what was coming. Even if it was bad, they knew what was coming. And to them, that would be better than not knowing anything at all what, what was getting ready to happen. Right? So sometimes following the Lord puts us in a place that's frightening to us. 
Things can move from uncomfortable to downright scary. Amen. And I'm following you, Lord. Amen. I can't see, you know, how to get out of this. I feel threatened. <laughs> this is not what I signed up for, God. Right? I'd rather go back to my old life. At least I know that life. Right? At least then I know what the heck to expect. And again... I don't have a miracle answer here for you people, okay? Sometimes following the Lord is scary. Straight up and down, frightening. You know, throw up scary, man. Vomit scary. It's here where we find out if our faith is real. You understand why those places are allowed to be there? Why we're allowed to go to this frightening place? It's right there when you find out if the faith you say you have is real. Do we trust God or do we not? Stop and think about that. Following the Lord calls for dependence on one voice and one voice only. There's one voice that cries out in this uncomfortable and scary situation right here that we're reading about. It's the voice of Moses. Read 14 verses 13 through 14. All right, the Israelite people are going crazy. They're going mashuga. Mashuga is a Hebrew word for crazy. They are going mashuga. There's nowhere to hide, nowhere to run. They're scared to death. All they know is God brought them out here. And it looks like he just left them there. Amen? Alone. How many of you feel that? In the midst of all their fright and their uncertainty, one voice speaks up. Moses. Moses spoke the words of the Lord to the Israelites. He reminded them of the Lord's promises, and he reminds them that God is on their side. Amen. There's a voice, y'all, that speaks to us in our fear also, and that voice is the voice of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We don't need Moses to remind us of the Lord's promises. We have the very voice of the Lord himself, praise God, hallelujah, in the Bible, in prayer, through the Holy Spirit. We have all we need to bring us through the voice of God. Amen. Let me get an amen on that one. So following the Lord means to keep moving forward, not backwards, not stops. Keep moving forward. God spoke to Moses and all that mess, right? I want you to read Exodus 14, 15. Pause. Exodus 14, 15, you should have read. God asked Moses why they were standing around crying with their hands in their head. Head in their hands. <laughs> what are you accomplishing right now? As long as you stand there and cry, the enemy's getting closer and closer. Suck it up, buttercup. Suck it up and get moving. Amen. A lot of times we get stuck and we start having these pity party for ourselves. I hear it all the time. It's not funny either, y'all. Fear is real. Fear is a very real, real thing. The sense of being frozen in place is very, very real. Okay? Sometimes everything is so overwhelming, we just want to curl up and hide. It's very real. So when you're there... I'm going to give you some very sound biblical advice, okay? You want to write this down? Suck it up and get moving. Suck it up and get moving. If you got to cry, cry, okay? If you're scared, say you're scared. But don't stop. Don't stop. Don't camp out right there in your problems. Don't camp out in your fear. Keep moving towards God, Okay, following the Lord, y'all, is going to make you a witness to the miracles of God. Did you know that? While the Israelites cried, God did something really, really big. Pause and read Exodus 14, 21 through 22. All right, can you imagine this scene, y'all? The Israelites see their lives flashing before their eyes. It's all about to be over. They're scared to death of what's coming next. There's no hope whatsoever, man. And then 
They see God doing things that they're never going to forget. Amen, y'all. Dry land and walls of water. Can you imagine it? <laughs> Following God's uncomfortable sometimes. I'll say that. It's frightening sometimes. Sometimes we wonder if it's worth all the effort altogether. And that's a fact. I know people do. But let me tell you something, you guys. You will not see the miracles of God if you don't follow him. If you don't. Do what he said. Abide and continue. That means don't stop. means keep going. You ever hear people talk about what they see Jesus do besides myself? I see him do all the time. You know why we see him all the time, y'all? Not because, why? Well, let me speak to myself. Why I see him all the time? Not just because I was with him in the desert. I see him all the time. I see him work. Because I put myself there right in his presence all the time. I follow him all the time. I put myself into his presence out there past my own strength and power into his strength and power. And that's exactly what you need to do. That's where God works, okay? Follow God at all costs, you guys. He'll show you things, y'all, I told you that will blow your mind. He'll show you things that you will never, ever, ever forget. Follow him at all cost, okay? Following the Lord, you know what else is going to do? It's going to increase your faith and your worship to continue. Here's what we find after Israel's little adventure. Pause and read 14, verse 31, through... 15 verse 1. Okay, what else can you do when you see God doing such mighty things, y'all? You sing, you praise, you worship. You know, you now you know, you really know that God is able, amen? Your faith is soaring high, sky high, man, because you've seen the proof of God's love and his care for you, amen? Let me tell you something, you guys. Listen to me. Your faith is not going to grow. It will not grow while you're standing still crying about your problems and your position. Okay? You're only going to see the miracles of God moving forward. Okay? That's straight up. So you got to keep moving on to the other side. You got to cross that bridge. If you keep moving, regardless of your circumstances, y'all, God will reveal his power to you. Amen. You're going to see. You're going to sing. You're going to praise. You're going to worship, okay? Got to continue like you said. Have you ever seen the proof of God's love and care for you, you guys? Tell me in the comment section. If you haven't, let me tell you something. Tell me in what ways have you seen God's love and care for you specifically in the comment section? Besides the fact that he died for you, I want to hear something very personal. But for those of you that haven't, all you got to do is look to the cross, man. Just look to the cross. You got to look to that empty tomb, okay? Are, let me ask you all a question. We'll leave you here with this. Are you not, do you, not do you know of him? Not are you reading the Bible? Not are you doing studies? Are you following God? Have you stopped? Are you, are you making a pit stop? Are you sliding backwards? Are you following God? Answer that. All right. God bless you guys. Anything you need to help us is in the description on the videos. Thank you guys so much. When I say us, I'm talking about the whole ministry. And Africa. And everything that God has me here doing. Thank you guys for helping us and caring so much. Okay. And I care about you. Now listen, we're out of town again. I'm at a hotel. I'll be here till Friday. Uh, we're working till like six, seven o'clock in the evening. Come and take a showers. I'm going to get the videos for you as fast as I can. So what I do is I'm going to go have dinner now. And then I'm going to come and study and get everything I need for tomorrow from the God and get it all written out. And so that, that's what I do. So you guys just follow along. Okay. Pass the videos. You know how many people need to hear from God like this? Because this is God speaking to you through me every day. Do you know how many people need to hear from God like this besides just you? Everybody. 
So pass these out to everybody, y'all. The church is so confused. They don't know what to do about nothing. Jesus told me my own people don't know my word. They don't know me. There's a lot going on, a lot getting ready to happen in America, y'all. That obviously I seen last night in the barn that some church don't understand what you are supposed to do <laughs> with certain things, you know, certain things. Uh, so God wants to teach. He wants you to know, and he wants you to dog on it, help other people and defend the, the, the poor, defend the fathers, defend the needy, defend the innocent y'all. Yes. So we're going to give you also scriptures in the barn Friday night where God, about 40 or 50, where God tells you better defend the innocent. In any way you have to. Just be at the barn Friday and Saturday night, y'all. And Sunday at 2. All right. God bless you guys. Give your life to Jesus. Make him Lord of your life. All right. We love and care about you. I will see you guys tomorrow. Thank you guys so much that are helping us. It's in the description. And don't forget the website. JesusDoers.com Not we are. Just JesusDoers.com Go to the World Tab section. Chris and Shanoa is pumping it up there for you all the time. The most recent things going on in Israel and in here and everywhere and whatever. It's all there. Juniors, higher learning page on, on the website. Hit the higher learning tab. Your stuff is there for the juniors. Okay? That's uh, 11 to 17 years old. Any juniors are welcome. And that's and you come into the barn for that Saturdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's all on the website. And you can also see what we're doing in Africa every month. If you guys didn't help us, we would have nothing to help Africa with. So thank you guys for helping us, okay? God bless you in Jesus' name. Make him Lord of your life.